Hey there Periscope, and hey there Facebook, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. How is everybody doing? We have kind of an unusual word today, but I hope everybody's been having a good week. And I hope that everybody's been listening to the Lord and, and being obedient to the revelations of the Holy Spirit and uh, walking in the victory that God meant for you to walk in. Because what was the point of Jesus dying? What was the point of the Lord going through all that? What was the point of the Lord making all that sacrifice? <clears throat> if we're not going to live in everything that he called us to live in. What was the point? What was the point of the Lord going through all that? So anyway, I just want to encourage you to continue to HBO, continue to hear God, believe God, and obey God in your daily life. Now remember, I'm on every Sunday at this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm on on the second Thursday of every month, 7 o'clock p.m., for a series I call No More Genies, where we deal with the genie concept of God. And on, again, once a week, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, live, I have my prophetic devotional out for quarter one. Quarter one is almost up. This is March already. It's time for quarter two. That'll be coming out in April. Uh, so I hope you've been being blessed by that, by the prophetic devotional as you grow in your journey towards the prophetic. Been releasing my music. Got some new tracks out there. So we are full steam ahead. All cylinders hitting. Uh, trying to release everything God has put in my heart to release to the body of Christ. So let's jump into today's word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for this day, thanking you for your kindness, thanking you for uh, how you have blessed us during the week. Thank you for the six days you just gave us. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for the word in church. Thank you for all the good things that are in your house. Thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith. So please bless us. Uh, keep us. Uh, Speak through my mouth, O oh God, fill me with the Holy Ghost, forgive me for any sin, wash me clean by the blood of Jesus, and speak through my mouth, breathe through me, O oh God, and let everything be said, uh, be what you want said, so that the body of Christ might be edified, that the words that are released are the words you want released, um, <clears throat> that you may speak through me right now, speak through your servant, O oh God, and open the eyes of your people to the truths you have released. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it, I'm so glad that there's nothing the devil can do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, amen and amen. So, today's prophetic word is welcome. Today's prophetic word is welcome. But, there's two different scriptures we're going to look at because there's two different aspects that the Holy Ghost showed me that he wanted me to release to the body, okay? So, the prophetic word for today is welcome, but we're going to look at two different scriptures because there's two different aspects to that welcome that the Spirit of God wants us to know. So let's look at the first scripture. Well, let's define the word first. Let's define the word. What does the word welcome mean? Okay. Uh, out of Wikipedia, a welcome is a kind of a greeting designed to introduce a person to a new place or situation and to make them feel at ease. The term can similarly be used to describe the feeling of being accepted on the part of the new person. In some contexts, a welcome is extended to a stranger, to an area, or a household. Okay? So that's what the word welcome actually means. So let's look at some scripture, and then we're going to look at that definition we just read out of Wiki, uh, and then we're going to tie it all together. I will repeat it. A welcome is a kind of greeting designed to introduce a person to a new place or situation and to make them feel at ease. The term can similarly be used to describe the feeling of being accepted on the part of the new person. In some contexts, a welcome is extended to a stranger, to an area, or a household. So today's prophetic word is welcome. The first scripture we're going to look at is Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Now remember, Psalm is right in the middle of the Bible. Remember that the Psalms are primarily music. Okay, so what you're reading when you read a Psalm is primarily music. Different styles, different instruments, and different occasions. 
and there are divisions of the Psalms to indicate what is what. But the book of Psalms, when you read it, you're primarily reading lyrics that they would be singing in Hebrew based on the context of what the music was about. Okay? So a lot of people don't know that one of the biggest books in the Bible is music. Okay? So we're going to look at Psalm 100, verses 4 through 5. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Now, when you come onto the broadcast, please like and share. Please uh, uh, post this as many places as you can. Invite as many people as you can. Because whenever the Word of God is going forth, we want as many people as possible to hear it. So God can bless as many people as possible with it. Okay, Psalm 100, verses 4 through 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So the first application of that word welcome that the Spirit of God wants us to know is that you are welcome in his presence. You are welcome in his house. Do you know why that's so important? Because sometimes you can go to church and you can get them funny looks from people. <laughs> sometimes you can go to church and sometimes people give you that look, this look right here, that, mm, that look right there. Well, the Lord wanted me to tell you and let you know that don't worry about if people look at you funny or if people have attitudes or whatever it is that they're going through. God wants you to know that you're welcome in his house. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Does that sound like somebody that's not happy to see you? Did you know that when you come before God, God is happy to see you? Did you know that? Has anybody ever told you that over the course of your life? That when you come into the presence of the Lord, because we're always talking about bringing the glory of the Lord in the room. But what is the Lord's attitude? The Lord is happy to see you. Did you know that? So you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's why he says in his course with praise, come before me happy. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. But why? So when you see the next sentence, it says for. The sentence that starts with for is telling us why we're supposed to do everything that happens in verse 4. So verse 5 starts with the word for. So verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Verse 5, for the Lord is good. So when you come into the presence of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are coming before a good God. That's why we're supposed to come happy. That's why we're supposed to be rejoicing. That's why we're supposed to come with praise, because he's good. He's not mean. <laughs> he's good. Sometimes people are mean, and demons are mean and crazy, but God's not mean. He's good. Then he said, his mercy is everlasting. Oh. That is one of the, the most beautiful phrases in the entire Bible. His mercy is everlasting. What that means is that in eternity past, before Father, Son, and Holy Ghost made anything, when it was just them, all the way until eternity future, where the Lord is this age and we're in the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem and all that, from eternity past to eternity future, God says his mercy is there. His mercy is everlasting. That means it never runs out. It's from eternity past to eternity future, and it will, ne it will never fail. And then he says, and his truth endureth to all generations. You know what I mean? I was just talking to my son on the phone just a few minutes ago. Everything that God says is true, it was true for your grandfather, and it's true for your grandchild. The same truth that God releases in one generation, his truth endures to all generations. What that means is that you can count on God to be stable. Okay, you can count on him to be the most stable force in your life. Because everything that you learn by living that's biblical and godly, you can pass that on to your offspring and it'll work for them just like it worked for you because it's truth endures to all generations. So that's why God wants you to know, God when you, says when you come before me, come before me with thanksgiving, come before me happy, come before me with praise, come before me with thanks and bless my name because I'm good and I've got mercy that extends outside of time and my truth will bless every generation of your family. And so did you know that the Lord is happy to see you? That the Lord is happy to see you when you show up. Did you know that? Did you know that God is happy to see you when you come before him? That's why, because I've heard my pastor talk about it. I've heard my pastor talk about how people should not be missing the praise and worship. 
That's a hundred percent correct. You should get to church on time to participate in the praise and worship. Do you know why? Because God is happy to see you. The Bible just told us what we can expect when we come into his presence. But the Lord said, you've got to come before me a certain way. How? With thanksgiving. Blessing my name. With praise. Why? Because I'm good. There, in other words, there's good things that are going to happen when you come into my house, when you come into my presence. And the Lord is happy to see you. He's good. He's got everlasting mercy. And he's got truth that will bless your entire family. You see that? So don't ever let anybody or anything, because I know for a fact that the devil and your own flesh works overtime to keep you out of the house of God on Sunday morning. Getting out that bed on Sunday morning sometimes is one of the hardest things you've had to do all week. Okay, getting out that bed on Sunday morning. Sometimes going to the house of God is a press. Hey there, word of our testimony, and thank you for inviting followers. Amen. When you come on the broadcast, please like and share. Please post as many places as you can. Please invite as many people because when the word of the Lord is going forth, we want that word to bless as many people as possible. I know that on Sunday morning that blessings to you, word of testimony, word of our testimony. I know that on Sunday morning, getting about that bed, hitting that young shower, and taking whatever mode of transportation you use to get to church, if you carpool, if you get on the bus or train, if you drive yourself, whatever you do, it's a press. It's a, you've got to press your way, but the good news is, is that when you make it to the house of God, there's so many blessings available to you because the Lord is happy to see you. You are welcome, and you can't let anybody or anything ever talk you out of the very clear idea that God is happy to see you, and you are welcome when you come into his house and his presence. Let me show you a companion scripture, and then we'll go to the next scripture. A companion. A companion scripture is Ephesians 1, but I want to read that out of the King James because I like that version. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 1. Uh, Ephesians was a letter that Apostle Paul wrote to a church at Ephesus. That's why it's called Ephesians. Okay. It's a church in the city of Ephesus, and Apostle Paul was writing a letter to them. That's why the book is named Ephesians, okay? And um, Ephesians 1, I'll start at verse 4, according uh, King James Version. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. There it is. There it is right there in the Bible. That God is happy to see you. You are accepted in the beloved. And you are accepted not because of anything that you've done, but because of his grace and the blood of the Savior, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, to cover you. So he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So once again, I told you about eternity past. If you don't know what that phrase means, that means there was a point in existence where there wasn't anything but God, because God does not actually have a beginning. And I know that hurts your human brain. There's nothing your human brain can do with that truth. As far back as you could go, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was always there, because they don't have a beginning. God always was. That hurts my little made-of-clay brain. As far as you can extend into the future, God will always be there. He's from everlasting to everlasting. That's what the phrase eternity past means. There was a point back before back where there was nothing but God. And then he made everything, the angels, the earth, the heavens, the constellations, the planets, the galaxies. You see what I mean? He's everlasting. Don't try and figure it out. You have to accept it by faith. It'll give you a headache because you can't figure that out with your mind. So it says that before he made the foundation of the world, he had already decided that those that believed in him were going to be holy and without blame before him in love. There it is. He's happy to see you when you show up. In love, not in meanness. <laughs> you are welcome. See, somebody needs to hear that today. That's why the Holy Ghost gave it to me. Somebody needs to know that you're welcome. You're welcomed by Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you can't let other people turn you away from that. And then it says, uh, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. 
there's the Lord buying you back because of Adam's sin. And what that means is that God made a way out before we ever got in. God made a way for us to be redeemed by him and to be one with him before he even made Adam and Adam sinned. By the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. You are welcome. That's the prophetic word today. You are accepted. You are part of the beloved. You are saved. You are part of the kingdom of heaven. You are part of the body of Christ. You are a child of Father God. In the Bible, there's a word called Abba, Abba Father. That word Abba translated means daddy. It's a term of endearment. It's a picture of you climbing up on Father God's lap like he's your daddy and putting your head on his chest like he's your daddy. So we're not just family. We're intimate family. He's not just my father. He's my daddy. Do you see that? You're welcome. Somebody needs to hear that today, that you are welcome. You can't be looking at folks. You definitely can't be listening to the devil or the demons. That cannot be your focus. They're going to say and do all kinds of things. But you've got to know, according to the scriptures I've just read to you, that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are saying to you that you are welcome. You are welcome in his presence. You are welcome in his house. You are welcome in his space. Okay? But let me hasten on, because I'm running out of time. Let me hasten on to show you the second thing. Good gravy from the Navy. I'm so excited. The second thing that the Holy Ghost meant by that revelation of the word welcome. We're going to be reading out of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 10. 2 Samuel is the second book about the prophet Samuel. He's an Old Testament prophet, and he is one of the prophets. He was the last prophet God used to lead the nation. So with Moses, God started the prophetic leadership of Israel, and Samuel was the last prophet to lead the nation, and then they went to the monarchy. Okay, so from Moses to Samuel is the prophetic period where God was leading the nation of Israel that he brought out of Egypt. Second Samuel, chapter 7, verse 10, reading out of the King James Bible, it says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness, wickedness afflict them any more as before time. What does that mean? Uh, what that means is that God is saying that he's going to welcome you into a place on earth that's a land of your own, a house of your own, a, 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 a condo of your own, a, a place where you can dwell in safety and you don't have to move anymore. So in other words, if the children of wickedness, if evil, wicked people have afflicted you before in the past, like let's say you had a rough childhood, God is saying that's over. Those people are not going to afflict you anymore. You can finally put down some roots and be safe because, see, when you walk into a house that feels like home, there's a sense of peace in that house and there's a sense of peace that hits your spirit. It's the most amazing thing. And when you walk into a house that doesn't feel like home, then you get the opposite of that feeling. You get a feeling of what I call unpeace. And what God is saying is, because that might be a physical move for some people. Some people, the Holy Spirit might be leading you to actually move to another city. But if the Holy Spirit's leading you to move to another city, that city is going to feel like home to you once you get there. The Holy Spirit might be leading you to a new dwelling place from wherever you're living now. But the thing that God is trying to say is that it's going to be a place where you are welcomed, where you are safe. It's going to belong to you. God said, I'm going to plant you. So in other words, you're not going to be tossed to and fro anymore. You're not, because think about it. Some people, their careers are like that. God is saying, I'm bringing you to a place of stability where you can actually plant a flag, where you can actually put some roots down and you can get, because you know, when plants get rooted in the earth, particularly trees, they grow those strong roots. And then they grow up as tall as they can, and then they bear as much fruit as they can. God is saying, that's what I'm bringing you to in your life right now, where you feel welcome. Because some people, uh, <clears throat> some people don't feel welcome 
their entire lives. Have you ever, ever, ever been to a point, been at a point where just no matter where you went, you, you felt like you had no place to go? God is saying that that is over, that he's going to appoint a place for you and will plant you there. You can actually put the roots down and that you may dwell in a place of your own and move no more. And then it says, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. That means that whatever was on your heels is not going to be on your heels anymore. You're going to have rest for your body, rest for your mind, and rest for your soul because you feel welcome. Understand? So that's the word of God today as released by the Holy Ghost, that he is making us welcome in whatever situation and circumstance the Lord is leading you to. He's leading you there so he can appoint you a place of your own, plant you, and so you can put down roots and have a place that's all yours and you won't be afflicted like you have been in the past. Okay? If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. When you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, then um, I am asking the Holy Ghost if there are any more prophetic words he wants me to release. General prophetic words, financial words, deliverance, any demons that need to be cast out, and financials. Okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. Uh, and then I'm going to pray. So here we go. Okay, the word that came to me to say to everybody was rejoice, you made it. <laughs> Woo! See, I know what that means. I know what that means for me personally. Okay, so the Holy Ghost is saying rejoice, you made it. You made it. You made it. You made it to the point in your walk with Christ where he can give you a place of your own. You can put roots down. He can plant you. You can you can dig deep into the earth and you can grow up as strong and as tall and as high as you can and bear as much fruit as you can and you don't have to move anymore. And you're not going to be afflicted by the voices, the pain, the people of the past. Wow. What a promise from God. What a promise from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I feel another prophetic word coming. Let me release that before we go. For behold, my people, believe my words. Okay, believe in the Lord God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Second Chronicles 2020. For behold, it is your time to be planted, to not be afraid, to live your dream, to be stable, to have something you can come home to and know that it's yours. And never have to worry again. So rejoice. You made it. Receive my word. Let go of your fear. Receive my word and mix your faith with it. So that you can do and be all that I've called you to do. Because you need to rejoice. Because you have made it to your promised land. Says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That's awesome. I receive it. And I know what that means for me personally. Okay. So, all right, amen, amen. I'm, I'm going to, you know, you need to listen to this video from the top so you can be sure that you get every line of teaching in it. And as always, I will post links on my Facebook Live page. I will post links of the Periscope, my prophetic devotional, my YouTube channel, and my website so you can have access to all my material, okay? So thank you to all of you that watch me live on Periscope. Thank you to all of you that watch me live on Facebook Live. Thank you to all of you that are watching the replay on YouTube, and thank you and God bless you to all of you that are listening to me on the podcast right now. I want you to be encouraged, because when the Holy Ghost gives a word like that, take it seriously, it's real. It means that we can finally relax, we can finally rest, we can finally plant our flag. We made it, just like the Lord said. All right? Amen and amen. Okay, I will see you the same time next week, 2.30 p.m. Uh, Sunday. Central Standard Time, don't forget to pick up a copy of my prophetic devotional. Don't forget to check out my U, uh, YouTube channel, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, uh, PDTSOTC. PDTSOTC. Okay? Thank you, God bless, and I will see you next time. And remember, you are welcome.